Hey guys, this is chapter 2.5. Uh, this is transformations. So it's basically going over vertical shifts, which is shifting a graph up and down, horizontal shifts, moving the graph left and right, and stretching, which is making it wider or narrower, and how to, uh, how to recognize what the function's doing. Um, so first, vertical shifts um, is just, you have to recognize it by the number falling x, basically. So if you have y equals x squared, that's your standard parabola. If you have y equals x squared minus 4, now you just shifted it down 4 units. So where it used to be, um, it used to start here and come up like this. Now it's going to be starting at negative 4 and it's going to come up like that. Um, so that's pretty simple. Any, any shift, so whatever this number is right here is what the function is going to be shifting. If it's positive 4, then it's going to start right here and do the same thing. Horizontal shifts get a little bit more confusing just because you have to remember that the signs are opposite. So if you have um, y equals x squared, standard parabola, and you want to shift it 4 units to the left, you have to say y y equals x plus 4 squared. So um, the tricky part about this is the plus sign. Plus goes left and negative goes right. Um, so you're just going to have to remember that horizontal shift is opposite, whereas vertical shifts, the signs match. If it's negative, then you're going down. If it's positive, you're going up. Horizontal, positive goes left, negative goes right. Um, so for in this situation, you're shifting its x plus 4 squared, so it's going to shift 4 units to the left. So you would start, the origin is now at negative 4, you're just going to go up like that. And if it was x minus 4 squared, then it would be over here. Uh, but what you have to remember is it has to be, uh, your shift has to be enclosed within the, within the function of x. So, um, for example, if it was y equals x squared plus 4, that's a shift up. But if you have y equals x plus 4 squared, um, now it's shifting to the left. So you have to be careful to know whether it's a vertical or a horizontal shift. So now that we know both these shifts, let's combine them. So an example would be y equals x plus 4 squared minus 4. Um, so this is shifting since you see you see here it's positive four within the the parentheses. So you know it's a four units to the left, four to the left, and then um, you see this negative four over here, and you know it's four units down. So that's the shift. So it would look something start. You know you go over here at four, and then you go four down. So it is right here. And it would go up like this. Standard parabola, but the origin is now at negative uh, 4, negative 4. So next we're doing stretches. So stretches, it's kind of counterintuitive just as um, the horizontal uh, shifts were. If you have y equals ax, let's do ax squared. So a is going to be a coefficient. Um, and so if a equals 1, it's going to be your standard your standard uh, width parabola, like that. If a is greater than 1, so if you had y equals 4x squared, you're actually making your, uh, your parabola narrower. So the bigger a, the narrower it gets. So this one might look like this. Uh, and that's and if you forget this rule, you can just plug it in. You can, uh, if you get the value for 2, which on the standard one would give you a y value of 4, but on this one, it's giving you a y value of 16. So you know, as you go over 2, you're going to go up a lot more than you would in this one, thus making it narrower. Now if you make it, if you have a is less than 1, so it's a fraction, uh, you're going to make it wider. So if y equals 1 fourth x squared or uh, x squared over 4, uh, you're actually, you're going to have a wider parabola, so it might look something like this. Um, and, and this makes sense too, and you can plug it in if you, if you forget this, but uh, if you go over 2, if you go 1, 2 on the x, it's going to be 
uh, two squared is four, four over four is one. So you're going to go up one rather than going up four. And so this is going to make it wider. So on a quiz or something, you might be asked a question, uh, like match this equation, match the equation to the graph. And if you, if you see it has a, a coefficient that is less than one, you know, it's a fraction, then you know you should be looking for a wider graph. And if it's greater than one, you should be looking for a narrow graph. And then remember the shifts. And so that should be a pretty simple, pretty simple few points for you if, you if you remember those rules. So now we're going to do a few examples to make sure you guys really get it. So uh, for example one, let's say y equals the absolute value of x plus 12 plus 5. Uh, so a lot of people think to, to add these two together, but however, that's not what we're going to do. Uh, since, since the 12 is enclosed within the absolute value signs, they act as parentheses, uh, this is actually going to be a shift of 12 units to the left, and it's going to be 5 units up. Because you got the plus 5 here, which is the vertical shift, and then you got the plus 12 here, which is going to go to the left horizontally. The second example identifies, um, I guess, kind of a trick they might give you. They might say um, y minus 5 equals x squared. And so uh, you might instinctively just think, oh, it's down 5. But however, this is actually going to be up 5 because you can make right, rewrite this as y equals x squared plus 5 by moving the 5 over to the other side and writing it in your standard form uh, for an, of the line or of parabola. And um, here you can see that it's actually going to be shifting up 5 because it's plus 5. So just remember to move all your numbers over to the x side before identifying shifts. So here's a little more complex version of that. If we had y plus 2 equals x squared minus 3, remember that this, this negative 3 over here is not enclosed in parentheses with the x squared. So that's actually a vertical shift. But then you can move, remember, move all the numbers over to the x side. So you get y equals x squared minus 3 minus 2. So y equals x squared minus 5. So this is going to be a shift down 5 units. So this fourth example, we're basically going to put uh, everything together. Uh, so let's say your equation is y plus 12 equals 1 fourth x minus 3 squared plus 3. So remember your first step is make sure you move everything over to the right side, the side with the x. So you can subtract 12, uh, 1 fourth x minus 3 squared plus 3 minus 12. Uh, simplify it down, you get 1 fourth x minus 3 squared and then uh, 3 minus 12 is negative 9 minus 9. And so now you're ready to identify all the shifts. You can see there's a 1 fourth here, so it's going to be a wide parabola. Uh, this 3 is enclosed within the parentheses, so it's going to be a shift 3 units to the right. And you see a negative 9 tagged onto the end, so it's going to be 9 units down. So wide, 3 to the right, and 9 down. So lastly, we're going to try a different equation. Uh, we've been doing all parabolas, so we're going to try an inverse function, which if you remember, an inverse function is y equals 1 over x. So let's break this up, uh, break this down step by step. This is actually an example out of the book. Um, so let's, let's add, let's make it narrow. So let's multiply by 3. So it's going to, have, it's going to be a narrow uh, inverse function. And so that's going to look like y equals 3 over x. And then next we can, uh, why don't we shift it to the right by 2. So remember it has to be with the x, so it's going to be 3 over x minus 2. And if you want to make it clear, you can put these in parentheses for yourself. But you know that 2 goes with the x because it's in the denominator with it. Uh, so that's a shift to the right by 2 units. And then from there we can do, we can shift it up 1, so you can do, 3 over x minus 2, and then plus 1. So you can see here it's going to be uh, narrow, sorry, narrow, uh, right 2, and up 1. 
that's it for transformations. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Just be able to recognize uh, the placement of different numbers and how that moves the graph around from its standard position. So next, we're going to learn how to use these functions for real world real world problems, and uh, so you're going to build your own functions. So uh, we'll see you next time.